Hey there, StarCraft fans. It's Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void. Just wanted to go through the patch notes before I get into the replay, or replays, showing off the new Marauders, and hopefully the new Ravens. StarCraft II Balance Update, May 15th, 2018. It's just a little bit of a balance patch. Raven Anti-Armor Missile Initial and Splash Damage Reduced from 30 to 15. Yes, those Dorito Missiles or Cheeto Missiles. Yeah, a lot of damage for the anti-armor missile there. Uh, this is a nerf that will hopefully help Zerg and Protoss. Terrans are kind of complaining about it, but we'll see how it actually shakes out at the pro level. And auto turret cast range increased from 1 to 2, which means that you don't have to be quite as close to your target, quite as close to where you're dropping that auto turret in order to get it going. So no big deal on that one. Shouldn't make too much of a difference. The big one here is basically bringing back the old Marauder. If you remember the Marauder from Wings of Liberty and part of the Heart of the Swarm days, those hit like trucks. They were very good against armored units, very good against stalkers, incredible against ultralisks. Punisher grenade attacks reduced from 2 to 1. So what it does is consolidates the attack from 2 to 1. So what that means is one attack is reduced overall less than two attacks are by armor, Right? Damage of each attack increased from 5, 10 versus armored, to 10, 20 versus armored. So both ways here, you're doing more damage versus armored. Upgrades will provide 1 base and plus 2 armored, level 0, 10, 11. And see how it keeps going up further, 11, 22, 12, 24, 13, 26. So you actually get more, um, more armored value per upgrade here. So basically, this just makes Marauders incredibly good against armored stuff. Roaches, Ultralisks, Stalkers, Immortals. To some extent here, tanks in TVT, they're just going to be little armor-clearing machines, armored unit-destroying machines, which means Ultras are going to see a lot less play, I feel like, in the coming bits, the coming weeks and months. And then Viking health increased from 125 to 135. A couple bug fixes here, just talking about uh, the new map, 16-bit LE. There were some missing doodads and things, but you can read this for yourself. Basically, they uh, hopefully are going to push out a couple more patches because there are some lightness issues with the new maps here too, but we'll talk about those a little bit later. So again, Raven tweaked a little bit. Marauder basically turned into uh, what it used to be. I think Terrans should be happy about this one and sad about the Raven change. But let's hop into game number one here showing the Marauder change, and then we'll see if we need to do a, a Raven uh, demonstration as well. So bear with me. We'll be right back. All right, game number one of our new patch replays will be between Summicron and Havoc here on Lost and Found, the latter edition. In the bottom left-hand corner, we have the red Protoss player. It is Havoc. And in the top right-hand corner, the blue Terran player. It is Summicron from the Foul Pal clan. Yes, there is a clan for Falcon Paladin. You can join. Come sign up for the Discord server and we'll talk about it. There's a link in the description. It's just um, a server where fans of Falcon Paladin and StarCraft can basically hang out and talk about balance stuff and favorite games and favorite players and things and talk about sports ball too if you want and movies and music and all those different things just a place to hang out there's a link in the description you can get it on mobile or you can download it to your pc Alrighty then so let's see how fast we go for these marauders here from somicron it's something we've seen a little bit of in the bit that i've seen okay there we go there's a proxy barracks here from Somicron in this TVP, it looks like a one get expand out of Havoc. No, that is a Nexus first expand. <gasps> Havoc, what are you Nexus first expanding? Are you a crazy person against Terran? And there goes the gateway. All right, man, the probe's going to move out here and not see this. Nope, very close. Very close to seeing it here, but Somicron placed that exceptionally well, so it's not going to be found at all. SCV coming down at the normal scouting time. That should not put on any a warm bell, uh, a, a warm bells. Warning alarm bells. That's what my brain went with that. Alarm bells or warning bells inside of the head of the Protoss. No big deal. I like these lights. They're kind of nice. Doing, doing. And there's like purple smoke coming out of things. This is a pretty map. This is what it is. Second barracks going down here too. And now here's the thing. This is where the warning bells come in. There's no barracks inside the base. There's double gas. This early, which is a huge tell. A humongous tell. If you're scouting a Terran player. So Havoc should be freaking out right about now. Honestly, if I were him, I'd probably cancel the Nexus, throw down another gateway, and start doing some crazy scouting with another probe on this side of the map. SEV, checking things out, he does see the progress of the Nexus and say, Oh, this is a Nexus first, based on this timing. But there is your tech lab on barracks number one. Probably should start making a Marauder. There we go. Marauder production has begun. 
for our Terran player. Other thing is, they're very good against buildings, because buildings are armored, right? Check out this pylon. Armored, right? Cybernetics core, armored gateway, armored, all the stuff. So killing buildings is going to be a lot better for the Marauders too. Terran going to have a good time with that. Getting concussive, sh concussive shell, which hasn't changed at all, but I think we're okay. Might as well get it. Slow some units down so we can hit them more with the attacks. Gateway and a forge in production here for Havoc. And what do we just good to be marauders? I feel like it's just a proxy marauder push here, and really havoc not responding exceptionally well. This is a gold level game, so it's obviously not going to be GM or pro or anything like that. But still, still we're going to see some interesting stuff. A bunker here, and here's our marauder. Look at that, doing 20 damage, single attack at a time. Not the papa, papa, but just single attack. Look at how fast that pylon is dying. Look at it. Another marauder shows up, and the slow upgrade's already done. And there's a Zealot here. Zealots don't take that bonus damage, but they're just going to get hit regardless. Is that bunker going to finish? The SCV is not being targeted down. Can't quite get to it with these probes. The probes are trying to attack. A Stalker is not exactly what you want here. Get inside the bunker. There we go. Bunker able to look at how fast that Stalker dies. Wow. Stalker absolute toast there. So many probes have died so far already. Five of them, but Havoc is still up. The problem is Pylon down, depowering the gateway. And this forge, this cannon gonna get focused down and destroyed there too and that's gonna be it i just don't see the protoss player coming back from this look at how fast these buildings die though the ones that are warping in seem to die pretty fast normally anyway but man each one of these shots is just taking 10 percent 20 percent of the health off this thing it feels like uh, the probe's getting pulled here too good micro on display here from somicron not allowing himself to get surrounded by these probes stalkers are not what you want havoc is not up to date on the current meta here. Stalker, look how fast the Stalker is going to die. Actually, Stalker kept alive to a certain extent. One of the Marauders... Oh, the Marauder gets inside the bunker to live! Stalker gets focused down. And now it is 20 to 16 Harvesters continuing to make Marauders. It is Somicron, and that's it. Havoc's out. So this Marauder Rush, incredibly effective. Still, before this patch, still pretty good. If you can get an unscouted Marauder Rush out, we've seen Special use it from time to time uh, in the channel and both on, both on the Gauntlet at uh, twitch.tv slash gauntletsc2. But... Fantastic little display there of Marauders versus Protoss. So let's come into a Marauders versus Zerg game real quick. Uh, we'll hop back right in with that one in just a second. Okay, we're back with another edition of uh, Patch Note Tuesday, I guess. Wednesday? Today's Wednesday. Today is garbage day where I am, so it's Wednesday. Uh, Tuesday was when the patch was released, but yes, Wednesday is new patch day for the channel. All right, we're going to speed this up a little bit here for Sassy, our red Zerg player on the top right of Lost and Found, and then we've got Samacar on the bottom left. Just got to speed it up, because I assume this is going to be another Marauder Rush. We're going to watch the Zerg player to, let's see if he's going to go hatch first without scouting, which is generally safe against Terran, but man, proxy stuff can really wreck your day if you don't scout this thing. The other thing is, if you're going to send your overlords out, uh, try to send them to places like over here or over here a little bit, places that proxies are going to be. If you just send them straight across the map, the Terran player knows where to put his barracks to where he's not going to be scouted by a Sloverlord like this. But it is a hatch first out of Sassy. There's your extractor. There is your pool. And actually making the barracks back home is Somicron. Does he have the double gas? Nope, a single gas this time. SCV getting chased away by a couple drones. Wow, they really want that guy dead. What if you can go home? You can't, okay, not, not, gonna, not gonna go home. Just gonna keep chasing him forever. That's cool. That is totally fantastically cool. All right, so the three barracks are done, making them all into tech lab barracks, and the second gas finishing up here too at about two minutes. This poor SCV, is he gonna live? He's gonna try to get in here, and oh, he's gonna get chased down. Ah, oh, SCV does go down, but now these drones are stuck in here. But they do scout. They do scout the three barracks, one base opening, all with tech labs. You have to know that these are marauders coming out here. Where is this? How is this drone alive? Well, SCB took him down. No big deal. No big deal. So Marauder production has begun. That's pretty cool. Look at Marauder there. He's got three eyes. What? Three orange glowing eyes there. Are Marauders not human? That's probably not what's going on. Anyway, if Sassy goes for roaches, he toasts. If this is a a roach opening, I don't know what to expect. Zerglings should do a lot better against the Marauders, just because Marauders don't do that bad bonus damage versus them. They trade out much more evenly, but you still need a bunch of them to take down a Marauder. These Lings are waiting for a Reaper. They're waiting for an attack of some kind because they know it was a one base attack. It's 25 to 22 Harvester. Sassy is droning up now that he has a basic Ling defense force. Couple up here at the top of the ramp too, just in case, I guess, a uh, Reaper hops up in this location. Sure. Sure, because why not? 
more and more drones here. Man, Sassy's really droning hard and I think can afford to do so as well. Third hatch coming in for Sassy. It's almost time, I think, for the Marauders to go for it, man. If you wait too much longer without taking another base, you're going to be down three bases, four bases. Sassy expanding like a boss right now. Wow. Four hatcheries at the five-minute mark at this at gold level? All right, man. You do you, Sassy. I'm going to follow these Marauders on over. They're not very fast. That's kind of the thing, right? Talked about this on the Discord channel today, actually. Is that if you're fast, you're probably light. Light armor type. And if you're slow and you hit hard, you're probably armor, um, armored. Right? Armor type, which is what Marauders are. But here they go. We've got a lot of lings throwing up a wall and a couple spine crawlers. See, buildings, though. Buildings are not going to help you in this situation. The Marauders will tear through them. Especially... Oh, he got stim too. He got stim and he got concussive shell. So the lings... Can they take a Marauder with them? They take a Marauder with them. But these Marauders... Look at how fast this spine is going to die. Wow! Four Marauders taking that spine down like it's made out of tissue paper. Better with the queens. Queens don't take that bonus damage. I like this wall. I really do. Marauders are getting taken down here. Queens are transfusing themselves. Well, transfusing each other because they can't transfuse themselves. Kind of an interesting thing. They can't heal themselves here. It looks like this queen ling defense is going to work for Sassy, though. So the Marauders can't quite get through there. The queen's defending exceptionally well. The lings here, too, do not make any roaches. I don't think even has a roach warren. Nah, it's kind of a standard ling queen opener. For Sassy, so many Zerglings. 32 Zerglings in production. I think Somicron might just be dead here. I mean, I don't want to call it early. I don't want to cast or curse it, but this is not a wall, and this is a lot of Zerglings. If they just bypass, right? They bypass this front and just go in the main, I guess. Yeah, there we go. Bypassing, getting inside the main. Oh, I don't know about this. I don't know about fighting here. If you're going to run through all that stuff, I guess, okay. So a couple Marauders go down, but that was pretty cost efficient for Somicron. All the lings are going to die. That's 40 Zerglings down for 10 Marauders. Most of the Marauders died on the other side of the map, and it's 12, exactly 1,200 to 1,200 resources lost. Zerglings here, again, the answer are going to be Zerglings. But I just, I mean, why bother attacking here? Just go in the main. Just start killing stuff in the main base. I, this might be too many lings, though, for Summicron to handle. Yeah, the Marauders, while good against armored stuff, are not good against light stuff, which is what the Zerglings happen to be. Canceling that natural base. SCB's getting killed. It's 30 to 21 harvesters. If this is just like four base Ling Flood out of Somicron, all right. Do you have a tank by chance? No. <gasps> a Raven. Hooray! Somicron's making a Raven for us to display the unit capabilities of this guy. Fantastic. All right. Thank you, Somicron. Thank you so much. If you don't know, Somicron is the co-host of the Falcon Paladin Hour, which is a weekly podcast that we do. It's actually his idea. He contacted me one day and said, hey, you should do a podcast. You want to have a co-host? And I was like, ah, sure, why not? I like podcasts. I partake in them. I might as well be involved in them. But there's a link in the description to that one. Talk about Infinity War. Had a whole one on that. Ugh, Zergling's getting a full surround here, though. Raven, save us. This is so many Zerglings. And there's a cancel on that natural base once again. Poor SCV down here just wants to live. Uh-uh. Not going to happen, my friend. All right, Raven, here we go. Raven going to throw down auto turret. Maybe? We see the range on that thing? Does it show us a casting range if we hover over it? Yes. Okay, yes. You see, there's arrows right there. So that's how close it has to be. That's the f maximum range at which it can cast down auto turret. It has been moved one from where it was before. Anti-armor missile. does cost 75 energy. We're almost there. And, yep, 15 splash damage upon contact. Down from that 30 it was before. Hydra's... With Groot Spines being uh, researched here by Sassy. Is he building... He's building missile turrets. He's worried about Mutas. Which, if you haven't been scouting, I guess Muta is a fair thing to be concerned about. In this particular... Sh oh, it is Muta. What the what? He's a miracle worker. He's a prophet. How did he see that spire? He didn't... I mean, he doesn't technically know that it's there. But, I mean, if your opponent is going this many lings early, they have a huge bank of gas, or they haven't been researching gas, but or harvesting gas. But either way, it's mutas. It's definitely mutas. All right, Raven. Toss something down here. Let's see an anti-armor missile go. I don't know if it's going to be able to save Somicron in the situation. It's looking real scary. This ling hydra thing is nuts. All right, Marauder Raven. Marauder Raven shenanigans. And looks like he's... Prepping up. There it is. Bam. Wow. Look at all of those units being Dorito-missiled. 
So it does knock them down. If you can see here, negative three armor because they're not upgraded at all. And the Hydralisks have negative three armor. Holy smokes. Is this actually going to work out for Somicron? He stims. The Hydras and the Lings getting a nice surround, though. And, yeah, even with that reduced armor, it looks like the Lings and the Hydras are going to be enough. An auto turret tossed down. There we go. Oh, no, the Raven gets picked off. Oh, the auto turret is not long for this world either. So you'll notice that the Raven didn't have to get quite on top of where he wanted to drop that Raven. He could hang back a tiny little bit and only died because he got too close after the fact. Wow, is that plus three infantry weapons? Nice upgrading, Samagron. Plus three infantry weapons. What's going to... Okay, dropped. Change his mind. Now we're going to drop again. Is sassy here. I mean, there aren't tanks. I mean, I understand you're worried about tanks. I get that. But... Oh, that's not even a, that's not even a drop lord. That's just an overseer. Okay, so we scouted to see if there are tanks. And there's not. There's no widow mines. There's no tanks. Basically, this marauder force should not be enough to handle the Ling Hydra force. Unless a couple anti-armor missiles go in there. So two anti-armor missiles. Each doing... Well, no, they can't kill the Lings because that was nerfed. They're not going to kill the Lings with two anti-armor missiles. Assuming they have no upgrades. They didn't before either, anyway. Ugh, there's the stim, but with no medevac support. Where did our... I thought we had two ravens. Did we not have two ravens? Well, the other one died at some point here, and that's it. There's your good game. Too many lings, too many hydras. The mass marauder was not good in that situation, but I think you get the idea. All right, so that's going to be it. We're going to try to get this finished and uploaded real fast so that people who are, I guess, in the United States still get this on the normal day, but people in Europe and Asia and Australia will not, but... Forgive me. We'll do better on the next patch. How about that? I'll try to talk to some people and get some firm commitments to get those replays in post-haste. Alrighty then. So that's going to be it for me. This has been Falcon Paladin coming to you with yet another edition of StarCraft II Legacy of the Void for the latest patch. Go ahead and hit that like button. Hit that subscribe if you like what you saw and what you heard today. You can also catch me on Twitter, Facebook, Patreon, and Twitch, all at slash Falcon Paladin. And until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching. And you take care of yourself.